huge point today, but uh, it's how it is when you're in a one and a half car garage. And uh, I've seen to pick myself up another motorcycle. I've managed to get myself a 2006 Yamaha. A really nice machine, low mileage. I like low mileage machines. That way I can use them up and somebody else hasn't. But yeah, we're uh, it's in the garage here again. And uh, we're just going to look at rad mock-up with the cooling fans. That should be good. Get the heck out of my way. There we go. Alright, so we are Flexalite fans. Um, low profile dual S blade uh, Flexalite 116551. Uh, this actually I bought from a Corvette store, uh, you know, a Corvette uh, retailer specializes in Corvette stuff. Uh, in Ontario here called Corvette Depot. I buy a lot of my stuff from there. So they had this listed as uh, made for the Corvettes, but I kind of don't believe that. I think it just comes out um, just pretty good. <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of fans and rads that are uh, pretty close to these measurements so this is nice it has a nice rubber seal there and it does fit quite well in here one thing I must say so it's just a little bit wide I guess if you tuck the seal in like that, you can get her down almost on it. Okay. Maybe I have to trim up this edge a little bit. See if I can get it to fit a little bit better. It don't seem too bad. Yeah, I'm just doing this on the floor because I don't really have room up on my workbench for this and I'm trying to keep the rad on the tank edges so I don't uh, mar up the fins. And you can tell it's evening because I'm in my evening workwear, which is my pajamas. So. No big deal. Just be a little bit comfy at night. But yeah, this is uh, a little bit of a lip under here. I expected it to sit right below, right into it. So that's what you want. You want that rubber seal as close as you can right into the fins so it doesn't pull in air like it's not too bad like here it's all touching just here in this edge here where I've kind of pulled it up it's it up just a bit but it seems to be the rubber seal itself that is causing the issue I am able to push it in a little bit here, push it down, so probably a little bit of persuasion or if I cut the, uh, 
the seals off the side because if they're that off, at least one side because if they're that tight you're not going to uh, it's going to be up against the uh, the edge anyway so you're not going to lose that much airflow all right so uh, I skipped a lot of the boring stuff we did all the um, fan install, AC condenser, uh, reinstall, I've done all the wiring, um, so basically I will just show you all the details of the aftermath and you can pick and choose what you use for yourself in uh, your project. So what we have, where's my light? Stupid light. Yeah, right. Sorry, stupid light. <coughs> All right. So to start off. I reins I installed the fans on the radiator, mounted the radiator in the car, remounted my AC condenser uh, behind it. I used some of the brackets from the car to, since I don't have a fan shroud anymore here, um, I used the bolts and the brackets that was from them to help suspend the wiring. Uh, the fans had their mounts, there were six of them. Uh, they actually came with four, you mount one on each corner and they have extra holes so what I did is I used uh, approximately the same size screw as what they did and mounted a wire um, clip to hold up my wiring from the fans uh, the f fan wiring they, rec they recommend they give you wiring for it and they recommend taking the two red wires from the fans joining them at the fans and using the red wire that they supplied to come back to the controller and then you join up with uh, either purple or, or yellow depending on your configuration of puller or pusher so make sure you read your instructions good with that uh, what I did is I crossed out all the section of uh, their instructions that were for pusher fans because I'm using mine as pullers and that way I wouldn't get crossed up because they have them uh, kind of mixed in together all at once and it's easy to get screwed up so uh, what I did with uh, the wiring I didn't like it all coming back on their their wiring I'm sure they know what they're doing but um, just for the amperage and protection so I don't burn my car down I ran two individual wires so all four of their wires here um, there's four wires just two red two black um, from each fan uh, what I did is I ran each wire individually back through this loom back to the big connections on the controller and right at their connection for the controller is where I joined up the two black and my two red wires uh, to their single large wire that goes to the controller and that way I'm not I'm pretty sure I have good amperage um, and I'm not going to heat up my wires going to the fans uh, so that's what I did with that their positive lead that they want um, from the controller I have it running down to the fuse that they supply here um, so what I did is I mounted the controller to my fender uh, with bolts just small bolts you can see there you will throw some light on this uh, some small bolts and then all I did is I took their fuse which is here and I mounted it off one of their bolts just for convenience and everything's there. I'm just trying to keep all the wiring as short as possible. 
Um, my painless wiring kit that I use for the alternator is the painless 140-190 high amp alternator kit. It comes with a 200 amp fuse. Uh, part number 30700. Good kit. Comes with the big terminals um, for their wire and to be able to uh, put multiple wires together if you have to. Uh, like they supply this larger one for the alternator connection so you can actually join your old alternator wire and the six gauge that comes with the kit uh, together into one crimp fitting and you are just then you just have one connection on your uh, lug on the terminal they do have an option to run the new six gauge wire on its own to the terminal uh, lug on the alternator and then you keep your original wiring terminal too and you just stack them together um, onto the lug onto the back of the alternator. Uh, I chose to join both of them together into one fitting and that way I have just one lug, one uh, terminal onto my alternator lug. My alternator is still loose I'm just gonna get this on. It was just kind of a little pain in the butt with the belt because uh, this new alternator has a, a smaller pulley, a little bit smaller. So my old belts that I had, the one that fit right on my, alter, my old alternator, um, was letting it lay back too far. And I have another belt that would actually run it into the valve cover. So I had to go in between. And it's happy. Uh, there are ground wire for the fan controller um, it's quite a large wire too so what I did with that is I didn't have another large wire so what I did is I actually spliced in two wires together in parallel um, to ground it out to the back of the alternator with um, the factory harness it has a, a ground right there too um, I could probably take these and run them down to the frame, but I don't know if they'll reach. There's a connection down the frame. Um, I'd have to extend everything. So this was already convenient. They already uh, the alternator already has provision on the back of it for um, grounding. So I just use that. That'll be fine. Um, the painless wiring kit, it comes with a 200 amp fuse, uh, which I mounted down beside my fan controller. And you put your fuse in, and then you put your lugs on for your 6 gauge wiring. You bolt them down, and they give you lots of extra uh, threads on the post. So what all I did is I got some other nuts and the fan controller wiring for the fuse It runs to the lug on this side of the fuse. So what I have is alternator Power comes out Comes around goes to the bottom of the fuse block power come through the fuse to protect the rest of the system in case there's a surge or something from the alternator and from the top of that fuse block is my power lead back to my starter lug on the other side of the car so I run that back and down and I actually have attached it to the starter lug on the other side so we'll have a look at that um, temperature sensor for the fan controller um, these two black wires I just traced it back over here and they want you to put it into your fan between the fins and uh, the tubes uh, beside the inlet to your radiator so this is my inlet here the outlets down the other side comes back up through the water pump um, so the inlet to the wire rad is here 
and that's where they want to, the temperature sensing. Um, of course, I still got to fasten this down. Uh, the blue wire to the fan controller is my AC uh, signal. So I just use a small 22 gauge wire. Um, it's only a signal, it's not carrying really a any amperage or anything. All it's doing is the box recognizes that there's 12 volt positive on this post and it knows inside that oh the AC is on so I gotta turn the fans on so that's all that is um, the last connection that I'm just gonna do now is my ignition so I have my ignition source wire here and that goes into terminal 9 on this setup. So I'm going to plug that in. And there we go. So now that that's on, um, the fan controller will recognize when the car is actually started and running and requires the fans. So all I've done with that is I've come back across through my harness here, hitting it underneath my vacuum lines for my headlights um, you can see it pops out here runs into another loom and that loom pulls over into this other positive uh, lead here that I've actually taken off the old ignition uh, the original ignition from the car that used to go to the distributor I've taken that off and I've run the power here. Um, so yeah, that's and all that is, it's on one of these little crimp blocks. I'll show you on the other side here. But anyways, the wiring for the alternator um, fan, the signal for the AC, actually the wiring I have go back up into the original loom and it follows to the front of the car comes around all the front of the car it's inside the original wire loom that carries for the headlights and the horns um, I have it run through there it pops out down here um, at the end of the, the loom and kind of gets joined up with the uh, other wiring for the AC pressure switch which tells the AC that there's gas in the system and will allow it to run because if there's no gas in the system uh, your AC is not going to work and if the compressor runs without gas it's also going to not circulate the oil and uh, your oil will collect in a different spot not, in the, not come back to the compressor and the compressor will eat itself so what I've done is taken that blue wiring, kind of blended in with the other blue wiring from the pressure switch, brought up here, made some connectors and soldered uh, a new lead for the AC compressor and have these uh, joiners. Uh, so these just come apart. These are just bullet joiners. Uh, they come out and you can see here the blue wire that leads it back across the car to give the signal uh, for the fan controller it's just jumpered off of here with a new lead also uh, to power the compressor the ignition lead from the fans comes across the car uh, like I said and it has just one of these uh, quick connectors what they do is they will they have a steel blade in them and you use a pair of pliers and you squeeze that blade down and it pierces each side of the insulation and touch touches the wiring inside the the wire um, the actual copper or um, aluminum or whatever your wire is made of steel um, so it'll do that to both of these wires and since it, the piece is steel inside it makes a connection for you um, so what you can do is make a simple 
jumper connection here. Um, this folds back over itself and clips on itself to keep that steel piece in uh, so it doesn't come out. And it, they're usually pretty good. Um, a lot of people frown on them, but I don't use them very often either. Um, I think this is maybe the first or second one in the car that I've that I've used. But that'll get uh, tucked back in here nice. Uh, this has to get tucked back in nice. And I'll get all those closed up. But yeah, that's where I'm getting my signal for the uh, fan controller. The alternator power lead uh, comes through the back of the engine from up top comes down does a little loop down here and I have it attached to the starter lug um, this is the only orientation I could put it in that was decent just because uh, I didn't get another big terminal in that kit so I had to buy some and they end up kind of short on the lug side um, so I had to come off the side instead of uh, nicely being able to wrap it like the original lugs backwards um, and kind of follow the original battery lead and back up around the car so I just came out this way um, made enough room to clear the headers uh, make sure there's enough airflow around it that I'm not going to cook this wire um, there's lots of room. I don't know if you guys can see, but I can get two fingers here, lots of fingers, three fingers on this side, and I could probably still make an adjustment if I had to to move it over a little bit more. Um, what I would like to do at some point is I do have a hole in the frame. Um, if I can get a bolt down there, I'll put a another wire clip and actually run that right to the frame but up where it is it's not too bad it's attached to the heater core line and um, it'll give a little bit of flexibility uh, if the engine is uh, torqued over a little bit so that should be good and um, yeah so basically that is it for fan installation um, I don't know what else to say. Let me just get across the car here. Get this garbage set up. There we go. So yeah, that's it. Uh, like I said I just have to clean all this up a little bit more just to uh, get these wires uh, from flailing around. Um, other than that, that is done. Um, good luck on your project with your fans. Um, just make sure if you're going to upgrade your fans, um, upgrade your electrical too if you have to. Um, some of the newer cars, whatever, they already come with a high amp alternator. Um, you just need to find a, a source you can jump off to uh, run the power to the fans because the fans will take uh, 30, 40 amps. Uh, depending on load and, and all that and the style of fans um, so make sure you get a proper controller for it make sure it gets set up properly um, use wire uh, circuit protection where you can uh, fuses um, just be smart about it you don't want to burn your car down over a couple hundred dollars uh, set of fans and uh, five dollars worth of wiring like spend some money on your wiring little bit and it'll protect your car and your uh, your family that's riding in the car all right um, that is it take care bye <laughs>